Hey, bless beautiful day, great for gas family. The grind don't stop. Y'all know what time it is. It's the sports huddle. About to get directly into the daily verse before I get into the sports huddle alongside with my cousin Mad Matt. Appreciate yeah, yeah. you tuning in today. Uh daily verse for the day of June eighth, two thousand and twenty four. Derived from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 8, and it states as follows. Listen, my son, to the discipline of your father, and do not forsake the instruction of your mother. Amen. And again, it's from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 8. And this morning, ladies and gentlemen, for the Sports Huddle Rundown, we're going to kick it off with recap of w, not WNBA, with the recap of the NBA Finals Game 1 um, last week. Then we'll be getting to NCAA baseball top twenty-five. You know they have the uh, college world series going on. Also, uh, the college football, not the college football, the college softball playoffs is concluded. Um, we have a, a new back to back to back to back champ. Well, not new because it's back to back to back, but it, it, well, technically it is a new champion for this year. But the organization has won four consecutive um, softball world championships. I think I said the other day too. Um, so we'll get into that also. Then we uh, Major League Baseball news, Stanley Cup playoffs kicks off today. Um, United Football League Championship weekend is this week. We have the XFL and the USFL Championship games, um, WNBA, and NFL news, and then we got what's happening in the wrestling world. So make sure y'all stay tuned for the full episode. Again, appreciate everybody love and support. A hey, shout out to the country of Switzerland, um, one of my newest countries that I've gained audiences in. Um, shout out to all my new followers. Appreciate all the love and support. Uh, shout out to the podcast promotion team that I that I um, acquired and, and, and you know used their services, all those type of things. Um, so I just appreciate everybody and um you know enjoy the sports huddle. So again, like I said last week, um this, on last sports huddle last Thursday we had Game One of the NBA Finals. Boston Celtics take Game One over the Dallas Mavericks. Um, you know honestly, you know the the, the Boston Celtics just came out. You know, on fire in a way. You know, they can they, they they gained a big lead in the first quarter. Um, the Mavericks did make a run a few times, but uh, the Celtics just kept you know kept their foot on the pedal, and they end up winning one hundred seven to eighty nine. Um, I expect the Dallas Mavericks to bounce back pretty good to try to even up the series to come out playing hard. Um, they have a good coach, Jason Kidd, uh, for the Mavericks, and they have Joe Mazzulla, uh for the Celtics. I think I called him Mike Mazzulla, the, like maybe our last um, episode. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so Joe Mazzulla and um, what's his name, Jason Kidd, first two black um, head coaches to face off in the NBA Finals. We have- have a, um, what is it, uh, a broadcast seat for any men's championship game like any men's championship series, anything like that. So Doris Burke, um, again, just paving the way for these young ladies. And, again, you know, it's, this is an era now where women are getting so much attention, and I have daughters, and I just really appreciate that, really appreciate the the light of women's strength, you know what I mean, from women who all already been here, but, but but especially for our next generation of women. And my daughter's going to be a part of that, so I'm excited for that. So um, what, what did you do? You, uh, check out game one, Matt? You know, I came in today with a lot to say on a lot of different topics. I ain't going to lie to you. But uh, I did check out game one. And I was also watching everything that led up to game one. I personally, I really didn't appreciate all the media talk about about the Celtics. I feel like th- this stat team and everybody talking like, like, uh, like they're the underdogs. And every all the attention was on the greatness of, of Kyrie and Luka Doncic, and then everything else with the Celtics was, can Jason Tatum help him? And I'm just sitting here like, this is a little, getting a little bit out of hand. And then Kristaps came in here, which I've been calling him Uncle Kristaps since, <laughs> since game one, since game one of this NBA Finals, because I'm just like, he came in in seven minutes, 11 points, three rebounds, three blocks. He's over here knocking down threes all over the place. So I don't understand – why why this team, this Celtics team, is kind of being treated like an underdog because we're all amazed by Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. Yeah, they're great, but this is the NBA Finals here. And if y'all didn't see in game one, like, the Celtics really ain't coming to play. They got experience now. And Jalen Brown, I feel like he's coming to – he's coming for that spot that he feel like should be his. 
Like, the man looked like he'd been in the weight room while he'd been sitting at home. Like, I'm used to him being in great shape, but he like he'd been in that weight room extra heavy since he'd been sitting there waiting for this to, to, I'm sorry, waiting for this to start. So, I don't understand why this is being portrayed like this. I hope game one shows everybody that this is, like, a series. I understand you're excited about the the greatness of Luka Doncic and Kyrie, but this is a whole series here. They come into play. The Celtics ain't playing around. They want that ring. Mm-hmm. I seen um I seen the other day, you know, Jalen Brown talking about he's single, you know what I mean? So he was like and everybody else, you know, took with their family on their time off. You know, he was like he just, you know, he he like he watched Harry Potter, but you know, that's what he said in the interview. But I know he in the gym getting in, like he said, working. You know, he don't have no no, no time to. He has time to put to, towards other things, but it's not mandatory. Like you have a family, that type of stuff. So, yeah, man, he just, you know, he be in the lab working on his craft, man. So, um, I, I'm definitely, you know, I'm in the air right now. Like I said, my mom's a Celtics fan. I'm pulling for, you know, the Celtics to to be able to win because they can, they should win this series. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Maver- Mavericks won either. And um, I predicted the game seven. You know, I predict I predicted the game seven this past Thursday, Sports Auto. And hopefully, oh, I heard it. And hopefully it gets to it, man. Hopefully it gets to it, man. So I believe it'll get to a game seven. Yeah, hopefully. Like game six of, at the most. I don't think this is going to like game one was nice, but this is a filling out process still. Yeah. I expect the Mavericks to play better in game two. Mm-hmm. I don't see this series stopping at five. I see this series going six or seven. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it's seven, man. It's definitely I would definitely enjoy a game seven NBA finals, you know. Oh, I know. Me too. So, <laughs> definitely will be tuned into that. Well, yeah, make sure y'all tune in. Uh, for Sunday games, game two on uh, DC. Again, game two of the NBA Finals. Boston leads that series one game to nothing. The Dallas Mavericks are looking to even up the series and win on Sunday to make the series one game apiece. So we shall see. Looking forward to it. Moving on to the College Softball World Series. Again, College Softball World Series Championship. Uh, was on Friday. I'm about to get it put up for you right here. So on uh, actually Thursday. So it was actually on the Thursday sports order. So uh, Thursday, the University of Oklahoma defeated uh, Texas for the Women's College World Series Championship. Um, the University of Oklahoma has won four consecutive softball women's softball championships. Um, just truly, truly, you know. Magnificent to be able to do that again four years in a row is just you know just truly remarkable, you know, uh, you know such disciplined teams. Just think about those ladies who've been on there since freshmen. You know now they're going out as their senior class to to win a championship every year is just truly you know truly amazing, truly a dominating performance. I'm um, just truly you know the work that they lost the games that they won. You know. Keeping that consistency and just going out there and playing, dominating in softball is just truly amazing to see. And again, shout out to the University of, of Oklahoma, you know, four peak. So that, that's pretty dope. Moving on to ball, we had the Braves defeat the Nationals five to two. We had the Blue Jays defeat the Orioles six to five. We had the Royals defeat the Guardians 4-3. We had the Mariners defeat the Athletics 3-0. The Dodgers defeated the Pirates 11-7. The Yankees defeated the 8-5. The Reds defeated the Cubs 8-4. The Rockies defeated the Cardinals 3-2. The Red Sox defeated the White Sox 14-2. And the Diamondbacks defeated the Padres 4-3. Um, another side note also, um, one week from today, we will have the, the first week of the Big Three League. Um, so I'll be having a schedule on Thursday sports huddle, and then I'll be covering it on Saturday um, for the the matchups. It should be on like CBS that type of stuff. Um, but just stay tuned for the Big Three League as that comes about again one week from today, and be on the lookout. Hey Dave. Yes, sir. How are you feeling about the Braves right now? I'm about to get on them now because they just lost to the Nationals. I'm about to get on them now. So <laughs> they they up and down right now for sure. But we want to be, we will, but I have some pieces to say. Uh, so, okay. the seventh, the Nationals defeated the Braves 2 to 1. The Brewers defeated the Tigers 10 to 0. The Pirates defeated the Twins, excuse me, 3 to 0. 
the Orioles over the Rays, six to three. The Dodgers defeated the Yankees in extra innings, two to one. The Reds over the Cubs, three to two. The Marlins defeated the Guardians, three to two. The Giants defeated the Rangers, five to two. The White Sox over the Red Sox, seven to two. The Royals defeated the Mariners, ten to nine. The Cardinals defeated the Rockies, eight to five. The Astros defeated the Angels, seven to one. The Padres defeated the Diamondbacks, ten to three, and the Athletics defeated the Blue Jays, two to one. Today's game is kicking off at 1 p.m. We have the London Series. The Major League Baseball World Tour London Series kicks off today at 1.10 p.m. on Fox. Um, so shout out to the United Kingdom. Um, hopefully y'all go check out you know, the game, tune in. I know y'all been seeing it advertised on y'all TVs over there, so hopefully y'all get a chance to go um, see the Mets and the Phillies play. And, you know, I don't really care for either one of the teams, but <laughs> <laughs> it's still a cool experience to see, you know, um, American sports get around the world. You know, it's pretty dope. So, yeah. uh, then we have the Pirates host the Twins. We have the Giants going up against the Rangers. The Athletics hosting the Blue Jays. The Nationals hosting the Braves. The Orioles going up against the Rays. The White Sox versus the Red Sox. The Reds versus the Cubs. The Brewers going up against the Tigers. The Royals hosting the Mariners. The Rockies going up against the Cardinals. For tonight game on Fox, we have two night games. We have one, uh, the Marlins versus the Guardians. Make sure you check your local listings. And then the next game we have on Fox tonight at 7.35 p.m., we have the Yankees hosting the Dodgers. The Diamondbacks going up against the Padres. And the Angels versus the Astros. So for Sunday games, June 9th, the games are as follows. We have the second game of the World Tour London Series. Kicks off tomorrow at 10 a.m. on ESPN. Then the Nationals host the Braves. The Giants going up against the Rangers. The Pirates hosting the Twins. The Orioles got going up against the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, if you have a Roku TV or a Roku device, the Rangers and the Giants game will be on a Roku tomorrow afternoon at 1.05 p.m. The Rays going up against the Orioles. The Cubs going up against the Reds. The Marlins versus the Guardians. The Tigers versus the Brewers. Astros, the Athletics versus the Blue Jays, the Diamondbacks versus the Padres, and for tomorrow night's game on su- on Sunday night on ESPN at 7 p.m., the Yankees host the Dodgers. So, um, back to the question that Mad Matt asked me about the Braves. Hmm. How you feeling, man? Hmm. Well, you know, up and down, uh, almost almost a little bit over halfway through the season. Um. I don't know, man. Just a lot of mixed emotions. You know, we spoke about the run on corner, you know, injury, you know, last couple weeks ago. And that really, you know, you really seen the effect as a part of the lineup. Ball. You know, when you have a when you have a quarterback who right, trip threat. Well, he he might be multiple things, but he can run and throw the ball. And defenses have to prepare for that. You know, they have to prepare for mobile quarterbacks, options, all those type of things, you know, just, you know, trying to contain the quarterback. But in baseball, you know, it was kind of the same when Ronald Kuna Jr. was on the, in the lineup. You know, just even the steal, the history of, of, of steals he had last last year. You know, being those miles home, you know, being able to take extra bases, you know, when, when, when they're not. When they're not being, you know, put into position by the ball going in play, you know, stuff of like that, uh, stuff of that nature. Um, but like I guess I, I definitely think um, Brian Snicker, I believe is our GM name, um, I, a winning, being able to play at the highest level consistent, consistently, and I don't think the Braves are doing that right now. You know what I'm saying? Do you think they – because is the trade deadline gone for MLB? Is it gone for baseball? You said, is it gone? Yeah, is the trade deadline gone? I don't think so. Like, has it passed already? Yes, has it passed already? I don't think there so. There we go. I don't think so. Let me see. I think it might, might be like at the end of, in the end of June, beginning of May, because you usually do it through halfway through the season. The NBA, NBA – MLB trade deadline is – let's see. Oh, uh, July 30th. Yeah, so – is there any moves that you think they could make or you would want to see them make? Mm, 
Maybe maybe get some more aces in a bullpen. You know, some good, some more. Well, I think we do have a pretty good bullpen. You know, a few of our. I can't think of his name right. Now. Strider was it Spencer? Was it Spencer? I think it was. Oh my gosh, yeah, I think it was too. But it's just too much going on, man. Was it Tommy John? Tommy John, yep, with the elbow, yep. Spencer Strider, yep, it was him. Yeah, man, it's it's ridiculous, dude. So, you know, another beast that's out of the you know out of the lineup, you know, once again. But um, yeah, man, I think I think we just need to get the bullpen, you know, back together, man. Get the bullpen back right. Um, get some more, like I said, some 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 more guys. Um, you know, the bats, the bats are gonna be the bats. You know, we got to get hit the batting cage heavy. You know, be more disciplined in that area. I do think we have a lot of good hitters. You know, early in the season, the bats are rolling. Um, I think this is just probably like a slump moment right now. But I, I definitely think you know, from the Atlanta Braves management, they've always been, uh, you know, heavy heavy during the trade deadline time frame. So I wouldn't be surprised, like I said. Even if some guys make some, they they might get some guys from the minor leagues, you know, different type of trades like that. Bring some guys up, uh, release some guys, sign some guys. But I, I expect them to be, um, I I expect them to be active in the market for sure. Okay. I get on my freaking nerves, but it's all. Good. <laughs> but you know, we're going for it, man. We're going for it. injuries happen, you know. And I gotta, like I said, I have, I have to stop being so personal, having so much personal personal feelings. Excuse me, um, towards you know when those things happen because of course it's not something that's in their control. They don't, no one wants to get hurt, you know. Um, but you know, best of luck to him. And you know, I seen Ronald Cunha Jr. after surgery in, in his wheelchair and just looked so disappointed, which I understand, man. I'm disappointed for you too. But like I said, I wish you the best of luck, man. I want you to be a part of the Braves, but if you can't stay, you can't stay healthy, man. You, you got to go. Man. I'm sorry. I love you. I think you're an outstanding baseball player, but we got, we got, we got. Yeah. man for sure so Playoffs, finals all that good stuff like I t- like I said Thursday I'm going for the Florida Panthers man rooting for the Panthers um they worked hard all this year to be able to get back to their second uh you know Stanley Cup finals appearance in two years so back to back final um, Stanley Cup final appearances so I think they're looking to see the deal, man. They were down against the Rangers. They climbed back up out of that hole to to take the lead and, and advance to the to the Stanley Cup final. So I think they're going in with a uh, great momentum. Um, I think the Oilers are looking to you know make a name for themselves. Also, you know, a lot of people probably doubted them during this playoff series and during this run. Um, but I think it'll be a, a good a good battle tonight on the ice. Um, and we shall see. So tonight at 8 p.m. on ABC, the Florida Panthers host the Oilers, and um. Make sure y'all tune in, man. And then game two will be on Monday. Game two will be on Monday in Florida um, at 8 p.m. also on ABC. So make sure y'all tune into the Thursday Sports Huddle um, when the series shifts back to Canada for the Oilers hosting the Florida Panthers. So we shall see over these next couple of days who's going to take the series lead, who's going to be tied, or what the status will be uh, coming up this upcoming Thursday. So make sure y'all stay tuned. Moving on to United Football League. United Football League, again, championship weekend is this week. So we have today games kicking off at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Oh, I'm on, I'm on Saturday, excuse me. <laughs> we have yeah. we have the 3 p.m. game today on ABC. Um, Again, the United, the United States Football League Conference Championship will be the Stallions versus the Panthers. And then tomorrow, Sunday, June 9th at 7 p.m. on Fox, we will have the XFL Conference Championship, and that will be the Battle Hawks versus the Brahmas. So the Battle Hawks versus the Brahmas. Um, expected to be a sold-out crowd. Like you said, uh, St. Louis Battle Hawks have great um, audience attendance anyway. So 34,000. I can only imagine what it's going to be like for the uh, XFL Conference Championship. So make sure y'all tune in again for Saturday and Sunday's um, championship week in the United Football League. Again, you had the USFL Conference Championship tonight at 3 p.m. on ABC, and you have the XFL Conference Championship t- tomorrow night on 7 p.m. at 7 p.m. on Fox. And, t- um, excuse me, 3 p.m. is not um, nighttime. You have that this afternoon on ABC, again, for the Stallions. And the- so make sure y'all tune in. And then the Thursday sports of the next week, I will have the finalists for the um, the UFL Championship game. So whoever, whoever wins out of the semifinal games will host 
uh, we'll see one another next Sunday on Fox. So make sure y'all tune in and good luck to both teams. Uh, well, all four teams, the Panthers, the Stallions, the Brahams, and the Battle Hawks. Good luck, fellas. Ship turn last night game June 7th, 2024. We had number eight Florida State absolutely dominate UConn 24 to 4 to take the series 1 0 to nothing over the UConn uh, Huskies. Then we had number one Tennessee defeat Evansville 11 to 6 to take game one in that series. We had number four North Carolina defeat West Virginia 8 to 6 to take a 1 0 game lead in that series also. And we had the number 12 Virginia defeat Kansas State 7-4 to lead their series one game to nothing. For today's games kicking off at 11 a.m., we have game two of the Tennessee-Evansville series. Number one, Tennessee will be going up against Evansville today at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Um, also at 11 a.m. on ESPN, we have number eight, Florida State, going up against UConn. We have the number seven, Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> Uh, hosting number 10 NC State today at 12 p.m. on ESPNU. Again, uh, the Georgia Bulldogs, this is their uh, first super regional game um, in 16 years, and we have home field advantage once again. Um, looking to hold down the Athens Super Regional uh, and, and advance to the whatever the next round is to, to get closer and closer uh, to winning the you know Men's College World Series. So the Georgia Bulldogs, again, we play NC State today. And, you know, NC State is my North Carolina team, but, you know, Georgia is my team, period. So, you know, I'm definitely rooting for the dogs. Um, you know, like I said, mixed emotions about this, um, you know, this series. Obviously, I want the Georgia Bulldogs to win, but if we don't win, you know, I'd be happy for the Wolfpack also. Uh, great great college, great um, university, you know, that type of thing. So, um, good luck, but uh, as always, go dogs. Then moving <laughs> moving on to 2 p.m. games today, we have on ESPN2, we have number three, Texas A&M, hosting Oregon. We have number six, Clemson, hosting Florida today at 2 p.m. on ESPN. We have number two, Virginia, going up against Kansas State for game two of their Super Regional round at 3 p.m. today on ESPN. We on ESPNU, excuse me. We have number two, Kentucky, hosting number 15, Oregon State for game one of their Super Regional Today at 6 p.m. on ESPNU. And we have number four, North Carolina, going up against West Virginia tonight at 8 p.m. on ESPN2. So, shout out to all the ACC teams, man. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five. We have five ACC teams currently still in the hunt for NCAA baseball championship. So, congratulations to those guys. And we have one, two, three, four, five ACC teams also. So congratulations to all those guys. Um, Good luck for the ACC. We show up here on the baseball field. The NCAA baseball tournament. Moving on to WNBA, WNBA action from this week, from this past Thursday through this weekend. WNBA from Thursday, June 6th, we had the New York Liberty defeat the Atlanta Dream 78 to 61. And we had the Chicago Sky defeat the DC Mystics 79 to 71. Friday games, June 7th, we had the Indiana Fever defeat the DC Mystics 85 to 83. We had the Seattle Storm defeat the Las Vegas Aces 78 to 65. We had the LA Sparks defeat the Dallas Wings 81 to 72. And we had the Phoenix Mercury defeat the Minnesota Lynx, 81-80. For today's games, kicking off at 1 p.m. on ABC, we have the Kinetic Sun hosting the New York Liberty. That should be a pretty good game. The Kinetic Sun are undefeated currently at the moment. And the Still New York, undefeated. Yeah, the New York Liberty have a, a pretty good um, basketball club also, so that should be a pretty good, pretty good game today at 1 p.m. on ABC. And then tonight at 5 p.m. on NBA TV, we have the Chicago Sky hosting the Atlanta Dream. Um, should be a pretty good matchup. I'm looking forward to that. Caitlin Clark, not Caitlin Clark, um, Angel Reese, um, Camilla Cordorso going up against the, the young ladies from Atlanta um, alongside um, Alicia Gray, um, those type of ladies. Um, Ryan Howard, you know, those type of girls. So this should be a dope game and um, some pretty good talent going up against one another. And I'm excited for it. So 
Go it's a lot of uh, go dream. I can't lie. It's a lot of uh, it's, it's a lot of controversy this week in the in the WNBA. You really ain't gonna get into none of that, man. I please, just, I just please speak I about wanna, it. You said speak. You please, said speak please about, speak about it. it. They've been having too much going on, man. Man, honestly, this kind of reminds me of what we talked about a couple weeks ago about physicality in WNBA and uh, NBA. This ain't nothing new. It's just eyes is finally on the product. We got more eyes on the product to see these women playing basketball. Yeah. And they're seeing physical basketball. I know we used to all these – we got to think about it. We used to all these all these uh, whistles being blown all the time for basically breathing in the sport. Mm. But, you know, things are changing. We not really even doing that in the NBA anymore. Mm. They letting them play defense. It's getting physical. Mm. Now, when it comes to this whole thing around Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark is good. Some people say that they set her up for failure coming into the league, kind of like donning her as the next big thing. Guess what? Adversity builds greatness. Mm -hmm. Adversity builds greatness. And I also want to point out, in the clutch, Caitlin Clark is second in the NBA with 20 points in the clutch. Mm. Buckets. Yeah. She done she got her second 30-point game the other day against the uh, D.C. Mystic. Boy, she dropped a 30-point last night. That's what I'm saying, on, on D.C. Mystic. Yeah, last night. Uh. 38, 38, 8, and 6 with four steals, knocked down seven threes. She going to be fine. Oh. This, is a, this is a building process. By Go year three, she going to be fighting for a championship in the WNBA. Going stupid. Yeah, Caitlin Clark is a bucket. Shout out walking bucket, man. You know? But, so, but yeah, no, you know, like I said, it's just not even her, though. Like, these last couple of years, Ever since uh, the LSU and Iowa met in those championship games, and those two girls' names were brought up, Caitlin Carr, Angel Reese, all those young ladies, and it just just really just took took the game to another level, man. You know, it it was just from that moment on, it, it was just anticipating their their pro days. You know what I mean? And and, and it's here now, and it's so That's dope to fact. be able to, it's so dope to be able to be living in it. You know, I've been covering this stuff for like I said the last three years, and and to be where I am now to see this stuff and see them as professionals, it, it just gave me so much joy. When I did a WNBA draft to see those young ladies, you know, names getting caught off the board, you know, all the type of stuff to see these teammates who were once rivals in the college become become teammates now in the professionals, you know, era. So it's just so dope to see, man. And I'm just excited for the WNBA as it goes forward. It's just how much, you know, and a lot of women are, you know, having mixed emotions about, oh, cause I remember the girl who she got to fighting with, not fighting with, but, you know, they had the tussle. That shoulder shove. You know, yeah, the big, the big hit on or whatever. She was like, you know, besides the three point or whatever, she like, what does she bring to the game or something like that? You know what I mean? And uh, you know, it's just people, people, you know, people are going to not like the fact that they not getting enough attention like other people are. Like this young lady who been in the league, you know, for years probably, but no one really knew about her unless you just follow the WNBA. But for the world masses and how Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese have gotten their names out in the world to know their WNBA players is everybody don't appreciate that from the NBA, WNBA because you know some people probably look at it like, oh. I had to work harder because my name wasn't known or something like that. But it's the same thing for the old ladies. They had to work hard too for the, to get their names known. You see what I'm saying? Like so, it's you know people 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 look. We have to look in the mirror. That's all. You know we have to look in the mirror and, and say you know what did I do to get here and understand what you did and don't try to compare that to some, nobody else. You know what I mean? So, hey, you got a point there because they can talk about they can talk about all that, but they do need to recognize what you said. Ever since that LSU Iowa game, everything kind of like really blew up, and people were anticipating these women arrival in the WNBA. Look here, Caitlin Clark is bringing more eyes. All we can really say is okay, she bringing more eyes. Guess what that means? More eyes on the playoffs, more eyes on the championship games, more eyes on you when you're playing Caitlin Clark. Take advantage of it. Her first game of the, her first game of her WNBA career. I I wish I remember that girl name. Shut her down the first game. Welcome to the WNBA. Well, I mean, you couldn't she really... did have 20 points, but she had a lot of turnover. You talking about uh, old girl from Connecticut Sun? I, I can't think of her name right now. You the guard? She real good. I, I seen her a couple times last year. Yeah, she had 20 points, but she had to work for 20 points. She did. She did. You uh, know what I'm saying? Hey, ain't going to be easy. Them girls get buckets, man. These girls are really bucket getters. You know what I'm saying? Been been getting buckets. Long time. So Yeah, and then on top of that, like, you know, there's other things within the WNBA that they got going on. It's definitely with the pay, and then we're looking at how some people got to go on buses while others got to get charter flights. 
yeah, all that can be worked out. You know, player association, we're going to get all that stuff fixed out. But take the eyes and ball out. Aja Wilson is. <laughs> Aja Wilson, a, she, she been a bucket. Like, sorry, I, like I said, I've been watching WNBA, you know, even just because of her. Like I said, when I got into college, when I, I've been, I've been mm-hmm. about WNBA, obviously, but when I got into college, women's basketball, it really, I was like, all right, let me go over here to the NBA, WNBA, see what these girls got. And like I said, Aja Wilson's name was definitely somebody's name who's been ringing for years. You know, that's why, again, like I said, she's the back-to-back finals MVP, you know, back-to-back champion. You know what I mean? Try to get buckets. Like I said, I, I went up her historic feet on Thursday. I think she had, like, first player in WNBA history to ever have 35 point, 30 plus points. I think it was like ten plus rebounds and five or six steals or something like that. Like shot up just just, just dominating fashion, like just dominate. Yep. So, you know, and trust me, I don't pretend like I've been watching this forever. I've known about the WNBA. I've always catched games when I could, you know, working everything. But I've always had questions, and I'm glad that everything is starting to change. I was like, why don't they give them some of those prime time slots? Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Why we put them in un, un times where they got to compete with the NFL? You know what's going to happen if they got to compete with the NFL. Mm-hmm. Like, let's switch it around. Let's put – let's like, y'all can play the numbers game. They know it's the media. They can play the numbers game. And also, I love the fact that you say you've been following this for three years. You've been doing more work than somebody that's, you know, on ESPN. They got called out about it. Mm-hmm. So, I saw it. I saw it. That was hilarious. But back to the point. Well, that's like, – you know, this is – you know, like I said, I've had – so much personal ties to the women's sports now because of my daughters. You know, personally, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna tell you no falsehood. You know, women's sports never interested me. You know, I always knew women were athletic and they can dominate and they could, you know, but I'm not a woman. You know what I mean? So it never, did, me seeing them never really intrigued me. You know, until I, like I said, until I had my daughters, so I got to show my daughters, like, look at what these girls do. And like I said, I've been to what they can do, but look at what these women do. You know, look at even what they, you know, the United, uh, the United women's soft, soccer team. You know what I mean? We're playing, we're dominant for so long, they fell short this last year. But, you know, playing, they need to be able to, you know, get their recognition out there because these are somebody's daughters, and I have daughters. And one day my daughters are going to go and do great things in their, in their life, and not just athletically, you know, just great things in their life. And I want them to understand that, you know, women paved the way for them, you know, other women who, who fought against adversity and, and, and you know, racism and all these other type of things, you know, uh, domestic, um, not domestic, what is it, what is it, you know, the, the, the gender inequality for pay and work and all these type of things, you know what I mean? A lot of women have overcome those boundaries. Um, so it's been super, super important for, you know, for my daughters to see that, you know, even from their own mother, but just from the, from the world also, you know what I mean? So. No, that's a fact. So then uh, WNBA game for Sunday, June 9th, we have the. Mercury. We have the Seattle Storm going up against the Middle Solar Lynx. And we have the Las Vegas Aces going up against the LA Sparks on Sunday. What was the information from the WNBA? Moving on to the NFL. NFL news from this week is not uh, as heavy as it was last week. I really don't have too, too much right now. Um,. Let's see. Let's see. Sure. Well, we know Stefan Diaz got his con- no, that's Stefan. Uh, Justin Jefferson got his contract, and it's too much squab. It's too much squabble about that. That's a good thing for JJ McCarthy. You got arguably one. You got arguably a. T- you got, no, I'm sorry, not arguably a top three wide receiver on your team, and he signed for four years. That's great for your development. Yeah. People got to cut that out. I mean, I get it. The kid is young. Okay, we just handed him a whole bunch of money, but I know. I know I was talking about, you know, the drop-off after big contracts, but not when you're 24 years old. Yeah, you ain't hit your prime yet. <laughs> yeah, not – but exactly. Not when you're 24 years old. Try when you get a big contract probably around, like, 28, 29 years old. I forgot, you know, we put clocks on wide receivers and stuff, unfortunately. I forgot J.D. McCarthy went there from the, uh from Michigan. Man, I don't even want to talk about that. They shouldn't even like, – it's okay. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm, I'm going to get to you. To you both. They won. They won the championship. Well, congratulations to y'all, man. Don't name no more for y'all. Let you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was Kirk nice, Park, you know. <laughs> Kirk Smart would never leave for the NFL at the championship. Ever. Never. Now, we know that Harbaugh did not leave. He left for a reason. And it was part of the paycheck, but it was other stuff. Well, still, we don't, we don't, we don't do controversy in Georgia. We just go out. We play ball. 
we win games and we, we stick to business. That's all we do, man. You know what I'm saying? We ain't on all that other stuff that we doing out there in Michigan. You know what I mean? But that's all uh, good, man. You got a point, though. Best of luck to him, though, man. Best of luck to him. You know, the Chargers going to be butt still anyway. The best thing they got was Lad McConkey. You know what I mean? So, hey, man. It's a oh, dog, man. baby. Shout out to them dogs at the <laughs> NFL, man. I'm so excited, man. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if the charge is gonna be that, but dog, they got Herbert. Man, I was gonna know just Herbert. They got Lad McCuckey. They got hell. That's what they got. They got Lad McCuckey. That boy brought Miles a, a, a Raider. He, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to be watching the Raiders game. Jimmy Cuz, boy, that my dog right there. That boy, I love Brock Miles. That, that kid right there, he different, bro. That boy, he, hey, man. That kid is different, but I remember. Oh, he, I know. I remember when I first seen this kid, man. I'm like, yo, he about to take it to the house, like first catch. I'm like, damn, like, man, and just he didn't just elevated every sense, man. Just kept climbing, kept climbing, man. Only one of three Bulldogs to ever win three All Americans. You know what I mean? Herschel Walker, uh, what's the other linebacker? Now I can't think of his name. David Pollock, and 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 Brock Bowers. You know what I mean? So. It's just truly talented, man. I'm excited for all the Bulldogs just got drafted this past year. You know, Kamari Lattice plays already. Over with the um, Packers. We got um, Omeris Mims up there getting getting in in the trenches in, in, in uh, Cincinnati. You know, all my guys, man, flying around. I mean, here, he Eagle. You know what I mean? So, you know, all these guys, man, you know, uh Marcus Rosemary, Jack Saint, he he uh, he he came on as an undrafted free agent for the commanders. You know, and all the guys I'm missing right now from the Bulldogs, man. Just so proud of y'all of y'all journey towards the NFL. And I'm excited for this next class also, um, for the Bulldogs. Did you did you hear about when I um when I mentioned we got Jaden Walker, um the number one yeah. line? Hold on, man. We like I said, we a powerhouse, man. We a train, man. We. So you spoke of the Eagles, dog. I I heard something the other day, so I got to ask you. Best wide best wide receiver duo in the league. Man, you know who it is, man. One A, one B, man. One A, one A, man. Devontae Smith, A. J. Brown, man. Come on, man. I got. I don't care what nobody talking about. Ain't nobody else on their roster got a Heisman winning trophy wide receiver, man. Y'all better stop playing, my boy. He like that. Slim Reaper, man. <laughs> hey. Telling you, I love I love watching Devontae Smith play though, dog. He run routes. It's like this. It's like a work of art, dog. Thanks. Watching him run routes. Yeah, better stop playing with my boy, man. He and AJ Brown, that boy a beast, man. Them boys, them boys like that, man. So I mean, I had to ask. I was started. I was listening to it. And I was like, that was interesting. Man, you know, so I had to go and I had to dig. Man, you know, and I was like, dang. Man, you know, this is the only wide receiver. This is the only wide receiver group that they producing results like high level results hey, going to Super Bowls. Hey, man. Hey man, them boys get it in, you know, and they we got we got them for a couple more years, but at least four more years, man. You know, hey, you know, sky's the limit, man. I, I was watching the um interviews the other day from the Eagles. You know, I, I like I said, I love the football and the Eagles media. You know, I, I get super in tune into the players, um, talk the coaches meet, and you know, like I said, football is so it's so many more it's so many more pieces than so many other sports, and um, I love to be able to get the perspective and the view from, you know, all the different changes we've had with the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, the new positions we get in, the battles, the, co- the competitiveness. You know, I love – I'm loving the, co- the competition, you know, uh, mindset. So I, I'm looking Compete, so I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, man, you know them birds. They... Shoot, and I'm gonna keep repeating this over and over again. People need to watch out man. for them Eagles, though. They have really revamped this all season. It's scary.
<laughs> handing the reins over to Mad Matt for some uh in, not NFL, some wrestling news, what's going on and wrestling around the world. You know, let's get into it, man. All right. Well, it's really only two things going on. WWE does have a clash at the castle in Glasgow. That's in the UK. That's going on next week. But this week, they do have their promotion, NXT. But before I get into NXT, I do want to say that I thought I was late. And I thought I missed it. But I did it. Thank God to the pro wrestling God and deities out here. Because tomorrow's New Japan's Dominion. And that's like one of their big pay-per-views for the summer. It's like New Japan, a form of their SummerSlam for the summer type way. I mean, the card, reading off that card really would, wouldn't be, because I know a lot of people don't watch a lot of New Japan, but I will say John Moxley versus Evil is happening, and the Best of Super Juniors final is happening, and I believe that was El Desperado versus Taiji Ishimori in the New Japan Best of Super Juniors finals. And the Best of Super Juniors is like they're – over there, they call them super dreams. Over here, we call them cruiserweights, basically. So that's done. But NXT Underground is happening, and Sexy Red is hosting it. I don't care about it, but she is hosting it. Maybe she'll do something wrestling related, a super kick or something. But <laughs> not a super kick. I'm, not but, so silly. I'm just like so- something, okay? Like she was on NXT, she was shaking her butt. All right, congratulations. But, like, we're going to do something wrestling related, then I'm all game. Let's, other than that, then I just really don't care. We can just move We can move past this, even though I heard rumors that she might be a regular. Oh, my so gosh. Like she's going to be popping up on NXT. Well, we, we know keep mentioning her on here. So Yeah, but, but that's true. I'm just saying. She don't got a name put up on here three times. So, sexy, you're doing something, baby girl. But, you know, good luck to you. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> if if she does a match, I'll probably say something more extravagant. But other yeah, than that, that's fine. yeah, that's hosting. fine. Yeah, that's that's it's all I care about because like the, mm-hmm. the celebrities wrestling has evolved, in my opinion. Bad Bunny has fucked up the game. Excuse my language. Mm-hmm. He has messed up the game. Mm-hmm. Bad Bunny has. He came in there and he actually had a wrestling match, like full fledged bell to bell, had a wrestling match. So Bad Bunny kind of messed up the game and my expectations. Then Logan Paul came in here and just kind of just took it to a, a different stratosphere. But NXT Battleground, the card is as follows. We have an NXT Underground match, which is basically like a, how can I put this? No ropes. They do have people around the ring, and it's more of a catches, catch can style. So it's going to be more mat wrestling, more jujitsu more judo, stuff like that in the NXT Underground match. Plus, anything goes with weapons. Uh, we have NXT Tag Team Championship match. And by the way, because the NXT is WWE's what they call, what people call a developmental brand, mm-hmm. where they come in and they kind of help the new talent they find, kind of acclimate them to the WWE way of doing things. But let's be honest here, it really hasn't been in, in a developmental brand in a long time. It's kind of like its third brand in a way. Is it uh this been going on about four years, four or five years now, ain't it? Oh no, nah, NXT been going on for over ten years now. Ten years, okay. So I know I heard about it for a while now. Okay. Yeah, so, so they just kind of TN, remember TNA or T? What was that growing up? Oh yes, TNA. TNA, I remember that. I, yeah, it's probably around that time. It was probably a little bit after TNA uh went off. I remember TNA. I remember TNA. No, TNA still here. Okay, yeah, I remember them TNA. Going oh, they got a partnership with NXT. Okay, okay. So TNA and WWE has been apparently working on a partnership for a little while now. And they got that. Okay. They're, uh, the TNA knockout champion, Jordan Grace, is challenging the NXT champion, Roxanne Perez. And I mean, this is the only prediction I could really give you or that I'll say I will give out because everything else is a little up in the air for me. But I think that Jordan Grace is about to take this NXT title and take it back to, to TNA. Like, I see an upset coming here with this. The championship is in jeopardy. I love championship matches where the championship feels in jeopardy, and I don't know who's going to win. I feel like that's better because it gets too predictable sometimes. I mean, it is professional wrestling. But I enjoy, you know, I remember when the big first third parties, um, I think it was happening in the early, like, maybe 2010, maybe, or. Yeah, man. Yeah, TNA popped up like I think 2000, 2001, 2002. I caught wind of it 2004. 
I saw I, Jeff Hardy on it. I, I caught I caught like on like the 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 big tweet and we were right way to start go. Yeah, I think I think I think I think I think you can that cover his face with the paint black and white. There's a yeah. lot of people. You talking no, about Sting? Oh, it's Sting. Okay, I was saying the right person name. Sting, yeah, mm-hmm. Sting. Then. I was saying the right person name. Yeah, I saw him over there, and um, I was like, yeah, man, dope. You know, so. Oh yeah, T- TNA was was great, and they're making a they're making a come up. They're trying to basically come back. This is a company that won't die. Okay. Like, they've had up and downs, but now they're back to calling themselves TNA after calling themselves Impact for a while. Impact, that's what and, it was. I know the new change to it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they they went back to TNA, Good. and they have their flow. They have their thing, but it's just about growth now. This partnership with WWE is going to help them grow. If they get a TV deal like I've been hearing about, if they get a live TV deal because live wrestling gets more viewership than already taped, but if they get a live TV deal, it, it, we're in business here. I'm talking yeah. about AEW got something to cry about then, just yeah. being for real. Okay. But we got the NXT Tag Team Championship match, Nathan Frazier and Axiom. Axiom, I really wish you would take the mask off and go back to A-Kid. I still stand by it. A-Kid is the best pure wrestler in WWE. If people don't want to believe me, go back and watch his work from NXT UK. And you can still see it in his work now. But with him as a kid, I really miss it. We need it back. Plus, he has that million-dollar face. You don't really want to hide that under a mask. They can make money with that. Mm. But it's Nathan Frazier and Axiom as champions versus the OC, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson. Then we have an NXT Women's North American Championship ladder match. The, N- the North American Championship for the Women's is a new belt. It's kind of like a workhorse title in a way, like an Intercontinental Championship. And by the way, they're about the they're talking about doing a women's intercontinental championship in WWE. So that is a good thing too. Mm-hmm. But we got Sol Ruka versus Lash Legend. Yes, her name is Lash Legend, and she's from the A. Shout out to Lash Legend. Fallen Henley uh versus Jada Parker, Miss Parker versus Meechin versus Kalani Jordan. Man. What? You said Lash from Atlanta? Yeah, last legend from Atlanta. Yeah, shout, out, shout out to the last man. She's gonna spank on who anybody there. You know, she from the A, man. You know, we, 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 oh yeah, she from the A. We whoop on people, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't want to try to, but we will we have to though, you know what I'm saying? Now I kind of look at it as, you know, well, a good bunch of us. You gotta you bring it to us, we're gonna give it to you. Yeah, facts. It's just that simple. But you got the NXT North American Championship for the men's Obafemi versus Wesley versus Joe Coffey in a triple threat match. And let's see, did I miss a match? No. Last one I did because I already talked about Jordan Grace and Roxanne Perez. But last one, we got NXT Championship Trick Williams versus Ethan Page. Ethan Page just came over from All Elite Wrestling, and that is a good signing for the people that clamor about WWE not signing no free agents. Ethan Page is a very good signing. WWE is looking for something specific, just like Publix, just like Walmart, just like any company that is hiring. They're looking for something specific. And what they're looking for is people that, and I hate to use this word, they're not afraid of the grind. Like we, They work a lot of shows, and they're looking for people that's not afraid of the grind. But Trick Williams versus Ethan Page for the NXT Championship, I'm assuming that will be their main event. But that's another belt that could be in jeopardy right there because Ethan Page is good and Trick Williams needs a true rival. Ethan Page fits that mold perfectly to help elevate him as a wrestler and to continue to elevate that belt. But NXT Underground, that is tomorrow from Las Vegas in the UFC APAC Center. UFC and the WWE does have like a little partnership going on too because Endeavor bought WWE and Endeavor owns UFC as well. So they'll do like little things every now and then. Okay. Yeah, but NXT Underground is tomorrow. Let me make sure I'm not saying Battleground because I know it's called Underground. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. NXT Battleground. I don't know where. Oh, it's the Underground match that keeps getting me confused because they do that Underground stuff. But yeah, NXT Battleground. That is tomorrow at the UFC APAC Center. Um, It will be on at 8 p.m. You can catch it on Peacock. And that's it for what's going on in wrestling. If you're a New Japan fan, Dominion comes on on New Japan World, and you can find it on whatever site that you use to watch wrestling. I'm not dropping no links. 
And <laughs> no, we're not doing that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it starts at 3 a.m. If you're a New Japan person and you want to wake up and watch it, it starts at 3 a.m. I'll probably be up watching it live. But that's everything pro wrestling going on. And that's that's it for me. Before we get off here, we want to bring some things up that have been coming out of line for the Olympics news that's new this year. Um, last week, we announced the uh, Unrivaled League, three, three, uh, three-on-three women's um, professional league that's coming out into the world. But now we have the U.S. Olympics, not the U.S. Olympics, the Olympics um, for Paris 2024. They are introducing the new, the new three-on-three uh, women's um, basketball tourney, I guess, like, you know, for, for the gold medals, you know, for the medals in the Olympics this year. So um, that's going to be cool to see, interesting. Um, I saw some ladies from the WNBA the other week got got uh got their jerseys to be you know to be invited over there to play. Um, so that's gonna be dope. And also, I still think we have a women's Olympic uh basketball team also to compete full court. Uh, so that's gonna be dope. To oh, see. we do. That's gonna be dope to see how um they do the three the three by three um the three by three tourney and the regular you know full court five on five tournament. So that's gonna be dope to see. And um. Again, make sure y'all tune in later on this month. We're going to have the, uh, the NBA draft, all those type of things. You know, we're looking to see what the Hawks are going to do with this number one pick. So, you know, I'm going to be tuned in. I will have that show um, coming up. You know, I will record it and then post it on the Sports Huddle show. If it's on a Saturday or Thursday, it'll be um, – it'll be – we'll have the regular Sports Huddle show. So, you'll have the, uh, the NBA round one. And I have updated information for round two, and things of that inf- and things of that nature going forward. So, um, again, some announcements to be on the lookout for this upcoming week. Next week, big three. We're looking to have winners of the uh, college college bas- college baseball world series. I about to say college basketball of the college baseball world series in the next couple of weeks. So make sure y'all tune in. Um, again, appreciate all the love and support for everybody around the world. Um, tune in and, and shout out to all my new followers. Uh, you know, make sure y'all, you know, stay connected, those type of things. Great for Gap Podcast at gmail.com is my email. If you want to ever, you know, send some information to me, uh, ask me some questions, anything like that. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all go tune in to Just Unconventional Podcast. Make sure y'all go check out that podcast. It's my cousin, my co-host, Mad Matt, uh, podcast brand. So make sure y'all go check them out. Again, just unconventional. And I appreciate y'all for tuning in today. Y'all be blessed. Until next time. Peace.